Dreams, creatures are coming at me. Must go fast. I actually think dinosaurs are the best monsters because they actually existed. Like a lot of the crazy monsters in films and in science fiction, you can console yourself by saying, yeah, but it's not real, really, it's not real. Whereas with dinosaurs, you can't do that. They were real. Like, it makes it more scary. Jurassic Park really deserves classic status. I, myself, remember gasping, and I think a lot of people in the audience did, at the first shot where they pull back and give you a wide-angle view of this giant, giant dinosaur. We, as an audience, are going through exactly what the characters are going through. We're seeing, for the first time ever in human history, dinosaurs alive. When I was a kid, I used to take my popsicle sticks, and I would basically glue them together in the form of a dinosaur, and I would bury it, and then I would wait a week Till it and, 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 and then I would go looking for it again. <laughs> that was my closest moment of trying to be an amateur yeah. paleontologist. Cut to years later and you're working on Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah. You know, and Michael Crichton just came up with the perfect concept. I'll tell you one conceptual line. I'm writing a book about dinosaurs and DNA. Yeah. And that's all he would say. Right. Well, I got sent the book. I got to the scene where the Tyrannosaurus Rex licks the windshield with the kids inside. Right. I said, I gotta make this movie. <laughs> I never even finished the book. I called up uh -huh. and he said, Stephen just bought it. Well, what happened and, was... And you know what? You know what? <laughs> yeah. It was the very, very best thing that could have happened because I would have made it like Aliens. I would have made an R-rated, scare the crap out of your movie. And you made it just scary enough, but still a movie for kids. Because I was the 12-year-old me yeah. telling that story. Well, some of those dinosaurs, as you know, were Dennis Muren and CGI special effects. Steven Spielberg would be on a bullhorn off camera and be going, and making some dinosaur sounds. Camera? And we'd be looking at a tennis ball. But some of them were Stan Winston puppetry. When we came to this clearing and saw this life-sized, full-sized triceratops, and the seven people who were making it blink and breathe and do things were kind of hidden behind it. Oh, that was something. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, he wanted the dinosaurs to have some monster abilities and to be seen as monsters but I was brought in to uh, make sure that sixth graders didn't send him nasty notes about things being wrong. There was a scene where the velociraptors come into the kitchen and are chasing the children around. And Stephen wanted the raptors to come in and stick out a tongue, like a lizard or a snake would do. And I said, we know for sure that dinosaurs did not do that. And so we decided the raptor looks through the window and it snorts and it fogs up the window. And only a warm-blooded animal can do that. Science fiction monster movies are very much about the monster of humanity. In Jurassic Park, our scientist, John Hammond, very much wants to recreate dinosaurs to prove that he can do something no one else has done. And that creates a chain of disasters that in turn creates a physical monster the literal manifestation of the bad actions of those humans. Yeah, and Jeff Goldblum is such a great conscience. Oh, yeah, he's the know, voice of the says, audience. nature will find a way. He says that, life yeah. finds a way. Life finds a way. And he's, and he's right every single time. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but, uh, well, there it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. This idea that in Jurassic Park, the female dinosaurs are capable of changing so that they can reproduce is brilliantly foreshadowed when Sam Neill gets into the helicopter before they get to Isla Nublar. And he's got two seat belts that are both female, but of course they can't stick together. So what he does is he ties them in a knot around his waist. And that is, that's the whole film, isn't it? 
It's the whole idea that life will find a way. It, evolution is an innovator that, that finds a way to survive, even though against all odds, it shouldn't be possible. I mean, it's quite clearly the moral at the heart of Jurassic Park is that you can't control nature and you shouldn't play God. But I kind of left Jurassic Park really wanting to see dinosaurs come to life. Theoretically, we can retro-engineer a bird genetically to make an animal that would have dinosaur characteristics. We could right now produce an animal that would have a dinosaur-like head, would have arms and hands instead of wings, some semblance of teeth, and we're not finished yet. We're still trying to deal with the tail. But when it really comes to the science of making dinosaurs or making anything genetically, I think it's actually a cool thing to do, and I, and I don't see anything wrong with it at all. Are we seeing a pattern here? The early atomic scientists, mm -hmm. the contemporary AI scientists, everybody only sees the rosy future, That's right. the upside. Exactly. As they said in the Westworld poster, what could possibly go wrong? And that gets the audience yeah. excited because the audience is going to see what went wrong, not what went right. You know, Who cares about what's no what right? It's no fun That's at all. Right.